Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of uh, Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Think Tech is all about technology and how technology is a vital part of our lives, and Likeable Science is all about how science is deeply involved in that process, very much a part of everyone's daily life here, not something just done in laboratories, just, just done by scientists, but we all use the processes of science every day in our lives. With me today is Melly James. Welcome, Melly. Thank you, Ethan. Melly runs a group called Mana Up and has been around uh, doing tech-type things here in Hawaii for a number of years. And we're going to talk today about sort of the role of technology in Hawaii's future and Hawaii's present, really, how technology is impacting Hawaii, how it should be and can be impacting Hawaii, why it's so vital and necessary for anyone doing almost any business in Hawaii, right? Yep, exactly. So uh, let's maybe just, uh, just uh, get started a little bit. Uh, how, how did you get into this technology business, as it were? So how much time do you have? <laughs> um, so the short version is uh, I lived in San Francisco. I was born and raised on Oahu, was living in San Francisco, and actually started my first tech company in 2007. Uh -huh. This is when the iPhone actually was kind of just coming into existence. Uh -huh. um, everyone was starting to have these smartphones. Really, the web was actually at your fingertips for the first time. So I created um, the first mobile website for wine, really uh, solving a huge challenge in my own life as to how to find good wine and kind of go beyond picking more than just based on how cute the label is and the price point. Right. So um, it turned into um, actually the number one wine app on the iTunes store wow. and a top 100 um, paid app and top 10 lifestyles app during its time. Wow. So that was more my background in tech in cool. San Francisco. and so. You know, kind of moving, coming back here, you know, working for myself and being able to be back in Hawaii, I kept coming back for a month at a time and really seeing some of this stuff starting to happen with technology here um, in Hawaii with the, there was a Han Accelerator, kind of like a tech, tech kind of like a, um, I don't know, like a hackathon happening, mm -hmm. and Box Jelly was just opening. Okay. So I started seeing some movement and thought, hey, you know, all these things I'm really loving in San Francisco, is there a way for us to do something more like this in Hawaii and really create job opportunities, sustainable livelihood, utilizing technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship? And so I moved back and quickly joined Blue Startups, which is a tech accelerator here in Honolulu with mm -hmm. Hank Rogers and Shanoa Farnsworth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, really loved working with local companies as well as the ones that we were bringing in from the mainland and international that are all focused on different technology innovation mm -hmm. um, and providing capital, resources, and mentorship. Oh. Um, moving on from that, I started working with the University of Hawaii with Accelerate UH, mm -hmm. and there it's their um, venture accelerator helping to commercialize intellectual property being born at the university, mm -hmm. many of which are technology-based sure. um, innovations. Sure. Um, and then kind of moving on, obviously thinking about Mana Up and other ways that we can broaden how we view entrepreneurship and innovation, especially in the product realm, um, was something that I thought long and hard about uh, with how we can start creating more industry here in the product base um, that's focusing on our regional strengths, which we believe is the brand of Hawaii. Yeah, and, and that's, that brings this to this sort of critical sort of transition that happened, right? Hawaii is this unique place. It's it's one of the most, if not the most isolated land mass in the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's far, far away from other places. Traditionally, it's taken a long time and a lot of expense to get to or from or move goods to or from Hawaii, right? But now, boom, we have the web, right? And you can move electrons as easily to the mainland or to Asia or to wherever as, as if you're next door to them, right? And so suddenly, this isolation, this distance is no longer the barrier it used to be, right? Absolutely. And, and that that really has made now a fundamental difference in, in how businesses have to be conducting themselves here, right? Yeah, I mean, it's really a game changer. Like you said, it was a huge barrier um, for Hawaii, where whether, even if it was if it was a product, trying to physically get something in every store and every shelf, or you know just trying to do business here without having Skype, without having Zoom, without having video technology and you know laptops and ways that are able you're able to work very quickly and remotely. You know, we're seeing this huge amount of people working remotely, which is a big movement mm -hmm. happening. Um, and, and why can't you do that here? You've got the surf sand and you've got the right mindset, you know, being able to get stuff done. Um, I think it's kind of a perfect storm for us to have some really awesome entrepreneurs and talent be, being based in Hawaii. Right, and then there are, there are really unique Hawaiian things, right? Hawaiian customs, Hawaiian ideas, Hawaiian designs 
that now it's much easier to export these than it used to be, anything that can be transformed into a 2D image, at least. Absolutely, right? and that's one of the biggest pieces for Mana Up, which is why we believe right now is the time uh, for an accelerator like this to work mm -hmm. with product entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. because it's, it's leveling the playing field. Technology is with e-commerce, um, you know, Shopify, Amazon, a lot of these big players coming in, allowing local product entrepreneurs to be in, you know, fulfillment centers in the mainland, to be able to get eyeballs in these e-commerce stores where you don't have to physically be in all these brick and mortar places all over the mainland. Yeah, you can send your, your greeting card or whatever with your little story about who you are and why this is so cool. And it can be printed in Indiana and shipped to Ohio, right? And, and nobody knows the difference, yeah. because, but it's Hawaiian, right? Yeah. I mean, and yeah. that's a big piece for us. We want the headquarters in Hawaii. We want right. to create critical mass of job opportunities and capacity for um, for, for uh, sustainable livelihood here. You know, how can we tell that story of Hawaii in a way that's authentic and taking advantage of some big trends happening, especially as millennials looking for connection to culture, looking at the package, flipping it over. What are the ingredients? Mm -hmm. Who's the founder? Where is this actually from? Um, and taking advantage of that because people are looking for authenticity. So why not marry the two? Right. And, and there's a lot of inauthentic stuff going on, right? Absolutely. Companies or products that claim to be Hawaiian but have nothing really to do with Hawaii. Yeah. Other They're very you, tricky. When you start you, actually noticing, right. you flip over the package, it'll say, made with aloha. Right. And it's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sort of like the old, when it was made in Japan, and they formed a town called USA, Japan, mm -hmm. USA. So they say made in USA, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and we, we, we have to sort of fight. I mean, it, it's a very competitive uh, landscape. Uh, mm -hmm. for products. Yeah, and I think it's important, you know, you look at entrepreneurship in Hawaii. Hawaii was built on entrepreneurship, it, you know, especially if you wanted to get ahead. You had to start something yourself. And so as we look at these product entrepreneurs, many of them have kind of hovered around this mom and pop level because whether it's a mindset challenge, like it's, you know, the cost of doing business in paradise or, mm -hmm. you know, just actual challenges that are being addressed now through technology with, you know, the Shopify's, Amazons of the world, e-commerce, mm -hmm. um, and, and really looking at, you know, how can we scale and elevate entrepreneurship businesses here so that we can create the sustainable livelihood and, and jobs. Yeah, and with things pretty, I, I was thinking when we were uh, first talking at the show, I was thinking of, of 3D printing, right? I mean, that, there's a technology that is growing day by day, right? They, they 3D print houses now, so um, once they can do that, they can pretty much 3D print anything they want, right? And so if, if you have an idea, a product here, again, you don't actually have to ship it somewhere else, right? You can have the idea here, set up your company here, and actually have it 3D printed somewhere else. Absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where it's near its market, designing something for Eskimos instead, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's important. I mean, you look at big companies like Mana Ola, which is one of the top fashion companies in Hawaii mm -hmm. right now. Um, in the essence of, of how they're creating their block prints and the narrative behind, um, you know, the, the intention behind the prints, all of that being very authentically Hawaii, mm -hmm. do all the clothes need to be made here? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you can, you can absolutely price yourself out of the market if you have to make everything here. Mm -hmm. But being able to tell that narrative, tell that story, have the world learn about Hawaii through an authentic lens from the people that are actually here is really important as we create, you know, industry that is leveraging technology to, to get it out to the world. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and, and this really, uh, and, and you, you mentioned this the other day when we were talking about technology, it's just, it, it's gotten so pervasive across every aspect of our lives now that, that it, it can't help but really influence the way we think about doing business. Uh, yeah. More and more, I mean, you, you see people who, you know, not only haven't, haven't written a check in years, there are people who don't use cash anymore either, right? They don't use checks or cash. They, they, they're doing everything on credit debit cards, mm -hmm. you know, swiping cards. I mean, again, it's just uh, the whole world is, is changing so much yeah. and making, a, making us, in that sense, more place independent, which I think maybe paradoxically drives up the value of, of a place-based idea, like, such as a Hawaiian item, right? Yeah. Because it's not just anywhere. It is Hawaii, yeah. right? It's very location um, focused yeah. and it's, you know, I think as the world becomes more um, homogenous where, you know, you, you were to do a road trip from California to New York and you're on the highway and you're basically hitting a Chili's subway, you know, Applebee's and, and a couple others and those are essentially the restaurants you're going across, you know, 20 right. different states or, right. you know, 15 states. Um, 
people are yearning for this connection to culture. Mm -hmm. They're yearning for something different. Right. Um, and Hawaii being at this, I think there's nothing more location focus as Hawaii. I mean, it's a globally loved brand. Right. People save up their whole lives to come here. Yeah. Even people who've never stepped foot here, they buy things that say Hawaii. Huh. Um, and that's what we're even seeing with a lot of these companies that are leveraging our brand that have nothing to do with Hawaii. You know, an example of that being Maui Chips. Uh -huh. You know, it's, it's actually Frito-Lay. has nothing to do with Hawaii. Huh. And um, what it's telling me is, you know, their market research is telling us that Hawaii sells. Uh -huh. So why would we not help our local entrepreneurs mm -hmm. create you know, this critical mass and industry in Hawaii, sure. leveraging our own brand right. and helping to tell that story of Hawaii that people are interested in right. um, and being able to profit from it. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, Hawaii has so much room for growth, right? I mean, we just, and you mentioned the Maui chips, you know, thinking about food, right? We import, what, 90% of our food? Mm -hmm. And then of the stuff we grow, we export 90% of that. I mean, this, this is sort of nonsense, right? I mean, all the shipping companies are making the big money, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's not the Hawaiians who are doing the work. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so actually we found that. So for our first cohort from Mana Up, we um, did a call for applications in mm -hmm. November. And actually we're recruiting right now for our cohort too. I saw that, yeah. At manaaphawaii.com. Okay. So if anyone's interested in applying, um, please go to the website. Mm -hmm. um, but we did a call for applications, got about 85 applicants, mm -hmm. and ended up selecting 10 of them. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was this really neat theme with the first 10. They all had an agricultural component as part of their product mix, huh. meaning they were sourcing, sourcing or growing their own raw material from the islands huh. that was in their mix. So whether it was the chocolate, Manoa chocolate, um, Kohana rum, um, Kunoa cattle, which has a great beef bar, um, Hawaiian rainbow bees, obviously honey. All of these pieces had um, an ag component, which is really interesting right now when you think about Hawaii and all this ag land that's coming into right. play. What does the next 150 years look like for ag yeah. with diversified ag? And especially what you're talking about, this local production for local consumption, yeah. how can we be more sustainable? Value add food products play a really big role in sustainability from an economic perspective. So for example, if you're growing 30 acres of, of a raw material, um, for the grocery store, on average, about 40% is unusable. Whether it's bruised, discolored, disfigured, it can't go on the grocery store shelves. So how can we look at that from a farming perspective and, and create another revenue line? So one of our companies, uh, Monkey Pot Jams made, um, from Kauai, uses all the fruits and vegetables in Kauai that was essentially non-usable. Oh. So she makes jams, curds, jellies. That doesn't, you don't care whether your fruit is a little bruised for that. That's yeah, not exactly. It's all going right. into the jar. And yeah. so it was a huge success story, huh. not only from the farmers who are no longer just having 40% of their inventory going to zero. Right. They're actually being able to take that as a new revenue line. Right. But she's creating these value-add products that can pay the farmers right. for that inventory, right. being, make it more economically viable and sustainable for the farm right. and create these amazing products that have the brand of Hawaii that are value add they can command a higher price point and it's kind of it's a win-win for everyone yeah yeah no, that, that's very neat that's very neat and uh, then there are the uh, on the ag, other sort of extreme of ag and the, the people at smart yields mm -hmm. uh, who, who uh, again a, a local group who got into this whole sensor technology yep. to help help small farmers and, and large yep. gardeners basically really fine-tune their conditions to, to maximize growth, right? Yeah, yeah. Vincent yeah. and his team are um, that's doing, they're doing some incredible work. And I love that you, know, you, you always try to solve problems in your own backyard. Sure. And obviously this, you know, ag and, and all of this is, is a big component that we've all been very aware of. And looking at how they've created a solution for that via technology and continuing to help um, farmers yield their, their crops. Yeah. Amazing. We're going to dig into this more deeply when we come back. Uh, right now, we're going to take a one-minute break here. Melly James from Mana Up is with me today on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and we'll be back in one minute. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. 
Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Melly James from Mana Up is with me today in Think Tech Studios. We're talking about technology in Hawaii and why technology is a good thing, how Melly and Mana Up are trying to bring technology to the forefront and help Hawaiians think more about how to use technology more effectively. Um, we were talking in the, in the first part a little bit about her, her first cohort through this sort of accelerator process. Uh, and these were all sort of mostly agricultural products. And, but I, I want to dig a little bit more than into this whole idea of, of taking a cohort of people through this process. And, and what does this really involve? How, who, who, who comes to signing up? How do they sign up? What, what, how do you select them? What do they do? Yeah, great question. So, um, we're, so we're actually right now we're recruiting for our second cohort, and okay. it's all through our website. It's a pretty um, painless process okay. online, uh, not too many questions, okay. um, and we, we we base it on certain criteria. So the criteria that we base the kinds of companies that we want to work with right now really kind of go into ultimately how we view um, opportunity for Hawaii. So one, we want the companies to have at least a hundred thousand annual revenue to apply. Meaning they have product market fit. You know, people are buying their products. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to figure it out still, and really are interested in scaling. Mm -hmm. Two, they're leveraging the brand of Hawaii in some capacity. So we believe, um, you know, when you're trying to create business in Hawaii, it's so hard to do business here. Right. But how can we create business that makes sense for Hawaii and mm -hmm. business that's built to last? Mm -hmm. And we believe leveraging the brand of Hawaii makes sense for business here, and mm -hmm. especially business that's interested in scaling. Mm -hmm. Three, the headquarters has to be in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to create the next 100 headquarters, the next 100 Hawaii CEOs with multi-million dollar annual revenue companies. Right. Really trying to create that critical mass of job opportunities um, for Hawaii. Yeah, because that's going to build the whole economy, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and being able to jump around. You know, we've got 100 companies. They've all got five or six management level positions. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't have to, you know, when you're trying to move back home from college, get one job in Hawaii and have to stay there for the rest of your life. Right. You know, when you have that kind of critical mass and great opportunity, especially when you have a headquarters, mm -hmm. um, um, it, you can jump around right. um, and be able to create a real career here um, for, for, for life. Yeah. Um, so that's another big piece. The headquarters has to be in Hawaii. Okay. Um, four, they have to want to scale. There are many companies here at mom and pop level covering you know, basic needs, um, kind of keep it more of a family business. And that's awesome, wonderful. It's just not a right fit for the, co for the sure, accelerator. Not, not what you want to do, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it has to be in the retail or value add food um, food product, good for export. Okay. So a big piece of this is around e-commerce. Okay. Um, Hawaii is actually 51 out of 51 states in the lowest uh, for um, exports per capita, okay. and we want to we want to change wow. that. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, not an enviable position. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so the companies have to want to grow beyond Hawaii. Uh -huh. um, so that's really why we created the criteria that way. We did a call for applications, got 85 applicants, as mm -hmm. I mentioned. And they go through a pretty rigorous interview process. So the ones that meet the criteria that we think are growing, you know, there's, it's an upward trend. Um, for example, Mamalani, which is one of the companies we selected, was a natural deodorant, mm -hmm. which we know is a big trend right now. They were actually featured in Allure magazine as a top 10 product, must have product. Huh. So we're seeing a lot of people not wanting to use the antiperspirants with the aluminum. Sure. So we're seeing that as a you know a global trend happening. So th that could be a reason we look at a product more closely. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very large um, and very experienced selection committee okay. um, who help us make these decisions, who are industry experts in various areas, whether that's manufacturing, packaging, buyers, things like that. No, it all make a difference. Yeah, all make a difference. This is their, um, this is what they breathe every day. Um, and so they really help us help make those decisions. Mm -hmm. So um, we go through an interview process. We then have uh, 
we, uh, ma we selected 10 companies, mm -hmm. and then we start the 12-week accelerator program. Right. So, what, so what, what does that look like? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's, what's, what's a day in the accelerator program? So what's neat about Mata Up is all the companies that we're working with are already revenue generating. Mm -hmm. So when we actually brought in our 10 companies, even though our minimum threshold was 100,000, on average, our companies were over half a million. Mm -hmm. So these are companies that have business, mm -hmm. they're producing revenue, and they have a, I mean, this isn't a startup. Mm -hmm. These are businesses. Mm -hmm. So what that, mean, what that meant to us was we couldn't have the accelerator be an all day, every day thing because they're running their business. Right, yeah. So we had to be very conscious of the time that we were utilizing with them. So before we even started the cohort, we asked them to talk about what is one or two scaling challenges that they needed to solve to help mm -hmm. them really grow. Um, and what do they want to accomplish? Who did they want to meet? What kinds of mentors and why? So really try to create a, a program that was very curated for each company. <laughs> so a big piece of the of the um, accelerator is curated mentor introductions. So if someone has a really great need and we have a perfect person, whether that's, um, you know, uh, one of our advisors is Josh Feldman, who's the CEO of Tory Richard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, we actually had our first co um, our first workshop at his headquarters in Kalihi, uh -huh. you know, kind of really doing a talk story with him on, you know, his journey and turning the company around and his leadership mm -hmm. style. And you know, that's I think one of the really key pieces of the program is getting access to those types of people sure. and being able to ask those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. So with our program, we normally meet on Wednesdays at around three o'clock. We do a couple different workshops back to back and then have a resource come in and talk about you know, there's so many great resources in Hawaii that have already existed before Mana Up, of course. We've mm -hmm. got the Foreign Trade Zone, we've got the Pacific Export Council, we've got the SBA, we have so many resources and we're really trying to uh, be able to connect those dots for these companies, say, mm -hmm. this is how you can use this resource okay. so that it's actually beneficial for everyone, where they're actually utilizing them yeah, more. So they understand what it is these groups do, how to approach them, what they can't do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we meet on Wednesdays, we always do a pretty heavy content, um, few hours, and then we always do a pauhana. Uh -huh. And the reason we always do a pauhana, not because we don't enjoy having a couple beers after mm -hmm. we have an intensive workshop sure. day, but because a lot of the magic that happens in an accelerator is really within the cohort. Mm -hmm. It's within these entrepreneurs who are going through very similar things, all, all, all obviously having different products, mm -hmm. but they can really relate to each other. Sure. Being an entrepreneur can be very lonely. Um, especially when you know you live and breathe your company, many people can't understand that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they really found it very therapeutic for them to just be connecting with each other. Mm -hmm. And even just whether it's kind of emotionally being able to talk about things that no one else understood, mm -hmm. but also being able to have some partnerships. Um, you know, some of the companies realizing they were all still buying their sugar from Costco and mm -hmm. thought, hey, we could all go in together for a pellet. Right. You know, so those kinds of things were happening. And a lot of that, we just stay out of the way. Mm -hmm. We're like, hey, you guys, they're at the Pohana, they're connecting, they're, you know, enjoying each other, and that's, all these things, magic is happening, and we just really just stay, try to stay out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, not, that's, that's often, often the case, right? You get good, talented people, and the main thing is to kick a few barriers out of the way so they can really do their jobs well, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, that sounds very exciting. It sounds like a... Uh, a good thing, and, and so then they do this for 12 weeks, you say? Yeah, 12 so, weeks. Sort of once a week meeting, this intense several hours of meetings, sort of some homework in between time, I expect? So, yes, so you know. we do check-ins weekly mm -hmm. um, where they talk about what they've gotten done, what they want to get done, and mm -hmm. so we hold them very accountable, mm -hmm. especially to what they came into the program saying they wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been really great. Every week we talk with them about where, where are you? And for a lot of these entrepreneurs, they're so in it, they're so busy, as you know, running a business, sure. that a lot of times it's hard to kind of step away and look at it from a strategic standpoint and more of a macro level mm -hmm. as to ultimately what are you trying to accomplish and how are you going to get there? Yeah, because right, it's too easy to, to let the trees get in the way of the forest, yes. right? So they don't sort of see that you know, you, every week you do have to do X, Y, yeah. and Z steps to make it on through, right? Yeah, these kind of small steps to right. get to what you're ultimately trying yeah. to get to. So we host uh, weekly check-ins. We do the you know the heavy Wednesday workshop mm -hmm. in Pauhana, and then we also do heavy curated mentor introductions. So okay. for example, if a company you know is looking to uh, do a rebrand or they want to change their packaging, mm -hmm. uh, you know we will introduce them to a very specific mentor or a resource um, that's able to help them do that. Um, we've got some awesome partners. Um, Spire Accounting is one of our great partners. Rodney and, and the team there, Lucas and Tyler, they work with our teams and help them from an accounting standpoint, okay. um, which is really um, 
quite robust in the sense that all these companies are revenue generating, so it's very mm -hmm. real, you know, sure. as opposed to just projections. Sure, they know they've got the, how you're accounting is critical, how much money you actually spend doing that is yeah. really a key part of your business because yeah. that's that's not generating money in the sense that's spending money, but you've got to do it and you've got to have somebody watching it well. And so, yeah, doing accounting well and efficiently mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a key. Yeah. Key, yeah. And, huh. then, and then also with, you know, from a technology standpoint, having our partners come in, uh, SendGrid is one of our partners, are one of the largest email marketing campaign software. Mm -hmm. um, Uber uses them for your receipts and things like uh -huh. that. So having them come in and talk to our companies about email marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. you know, how are you capturing data? Um, your, your know, website, your e-commerce, things like that, um, which is really wonderful because a lot of our companies, one of the biggest areas of challenge that they identified was their online presence. Sure. Um, and so that that's a big area that we, we focus on. Mm -hmm. So you know, through the 12 weeks with the check-ins and the workshops and the mentor introductions, um, at the end is a culmination. Um, we have a showcase. We actually just hosted our last showcase at Salt at our Kaka'ako. We had over uh -huh. 600 people there. Wow, the companies awesome. did a three-minute pitch oh, um, okay. to the audience, and we also had a marketplace uh, where people could taste and also buy product, which oh, was right. a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. No, that sounds great. It sounds, sounds like a really wonderful sort of process that you've set in place, and now you're getting ready to, to do another 12 weeks with an, another 10 companies? Yep, yep, uh, so we're yeah. recruiting right now, yeah. so if uh, anyone uh, out there uh, is interested, you please do, apply. You're trying to do these at, uh, three a year? We're two doing a year? two a year. Two a year yeah. 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 You probably need some downtime in between. Yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty intensive, I'm sure, to run that, and yeah. that yeah. takes a lot of time and energy to, because it sounds like you're doing a lot of very personal one-on-one -on -one kind of things with the people and setting up the, the introductions and, and those initial meetings, I'm sure you have to facilitate and help get that conversation moving in the right way. Too. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, we do a lot of work with, like, the community as well. Mm -hmm. So Kamehameha Schools is our title partner. And uh -huh. um, we have other great partners. Um, Hawaiian Airlines is our exclusive airline partner. Uh -huh. Lupono Initiative, American Savings Bank, Castle and Cook. Uh -huh. um, and so part of this is, especially with Kamehameha Schools, uh, around alternative career pathways. Mm -hmm. So how can we create this pipeline uh -huh. of more companies for Mana Up, but also Create that mindset shift, especially yeah. for students, yeah. that you can do it here. Here exactly. are tangible examples of successful entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's beautiful, yeah. Uh, which is really wonderful from an access and exposure standpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. Wow, very very exciting, very exciting stuff. That, that's so so good that you're doing that. It's, it's good for you, it's good for the, all these people who are in, running through your program, it's good for the economy as a whole, you know, it's, it's good for the state. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's excellent. Thank you, Ethan. Hey, so before I let you go, I'm gonna switch topics entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with. Should I brace myself? <laughs> Should I brace myself? <laughs> Completely off the wall question. Here it is. Okay. If you could have one of the two superpowers, you could either fly or you could be invisible. Which would you choose and why? That's an interesting question. I would say I would rather f I'd like to fly, and the reason oh. being is um, I just. I love just feeling inspired and being able to see things from different perspectives mm -hmm. um, and kind of getting high up, especially from what we're doing at Mana Up is like that yeah. next level, kind of macro level perspective and an economic development initiative that mm -hmm. that's, is good for Hawaii, that's good yeah. for the state. I love being able to have opportunity for that kind of different perspective and just feeling exhilarated. Cool. Um, so that, that would be why I'd pick flying. Excellent. <laughs> hey, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank it was you. a real pleasure having you. I, I really appreciate it. Aloha. And I hope you will come back next week for another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii.